All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone that's joining us in this live trade room, wherever you may be in the world. My name is Ryan, I'm with ZenFX, as you guys already know, and this is our Tuesday morning live trade room. Thanks to everyone that's joining us live here in the trade room. And uh, of course, welcome if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, welcome to our live trade room analysis. We're gonna be going over the full circle scalping setup on UJ as we usually do. We'll be analyzing UJ. Basically, we're just running through the numbers. We're going through the motions of the full circle scalping technique and then you can apply this to any pair that you like, whatever pair it is that you trade. And then um, if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about uh, any other price action setups that may be forming. Um, we definitely, we have a request already to go over how to scale out of positions. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit, uh, but we'll keep it brief. I don't wanna make this too long. I always say that and my 30 minute trade rooms end up going into an hour. And I know nobody wants to rewatch an hour long video on YouTube, so we'll try and keep this brief. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the full circle scalping technique, also Forex does carry a little bit of inherent risk, but if you're unfamiliar with the full circle scalping technique, I have all the free videos on YouTube, so check those out. Uh, I like using it for scalping on the 15 minute uh, time frame. It's very easy for beginners to uh, pick up and even advanced students can learn a little bit from it. We're just using basic supply and demand, support and resistance, looking for five to 10 pips a day, small equity increases, and uh, we're just buying off support, selling off resistance. That's it, I mean, it's very, very simple. And then you can add any other techniques that you want into it. I just feel that support and resistance are the foundation for, um, looking for price action setups. That's just me personally, but that's just what we do here. So let's talk about, let's, uh, Mary, let me, um, Maryse, let me cover your question first, and then we'll get to our um, full circle scalping setups. And actually let me get MT4 fired up here. I forgot to get that started. So here is a, here is the USD Canadian dollar trade that we had planned out on Sunday. Uh, we had our markup in place. Look, if we zoom out to the four hour, get a, uh, a better top down view. So we had this head and shoulders pattern and we had this break of the neckline last week. And what we were waiting for was a retest of this neckline and a short trade and that is exactly what we got it was a beautiful trade it's it's finishing up right now we've hit uh, take profit one and take profit two and uh, we're we've just about five pips away from take profit three but um, you know if I was you I'd go ahead and secure that 125 pips right now just to be on the safe side because you never know what price can do it could be a uh, reversing as we speak but Totally up to you. You guys play it however you want to play it. Now, let's take a look real quick. I always like to do some price action analysis on the spot if we can. Now, did we get what would be classified as a 2618 entry? We did not. Now, in, in the advanced Fibonacci course, um, for uh, this is going to be in uh, lesson three for actually it's gonna be lesson two, for those of you that are in the advanced price action course, we're gonna talk about what the levels of um, Fibonacci retracement generally mean. And our 38.2 is always going to signify to us a minor retracement, not a major retracement, uh, which we can then kind of project out an ABCD pattern, maybe a one-to-one -one movement, a one-to-one -one reciprocal, as they're known in the harmonic trading world. Um, if we get a, a touch to the 50 or the 61.8, then we can kind of look for that type of a pattern, that one-to-one -one movement. Uh, and when we go through the course, uh, really the 50 and the 61.8 is, is all that I take trades off of. I don't really look for deeper retracements off the 78 or the 88, but the 38, is our minor pullback. And when we can get it kind of clustered or confluence there 
get that confluence with a major level of support and resistance like we have here with that neckline, when we get that type of a pullback, it's a, generally speaking, a majority of the time, it's going to be a continuation of trend. It's gonna come back, if it taps that, then we know that that trend is just gonna continue on and that the market was taking a small pause, a small breather. Um, and that's why when we enter on that, we're not looking for, like uh, when I say one-to-one, -one, when we do, thank you MT4, when we look for a one-to-one -one, um, reciprocal, hello, there we go, um, in like an ABCD pattern, I'm saying, I know I'm saying that odd, in an ABCD pattern, so we have this first impulse leg. If it pulls back to like the 50 or 60, then we're looking for a one-to-one -one movement, just like that, okay? Does that make sense? If you guys are unfamiliar with the ABCD pattern, I've got a full two-part video series on it on the YouTube channel. It's free. Check it out. Very easy to master and one of my favorite harmonic patterns. It's really the only harmonic uh, pattern that I use. I don't I don't trade a lot with like Gartley's or bats or things like that, just personal preference. So that's what we're looking for is a one to one impulse leg and then our trade leg C to D, we're looking for that. On a 38.2, we're just looking for a continuation of trend and we can take it down to the next support level if we're in a cell or just follow it down until we see price action indicate that maybe buyers are coming in the market or we really kind of have to play it by ear. We don't have a lot of strong rules with 38.2. So we did have that in our favor. So let me digress back into how do we scale in and out of positions. Now there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it the plan ahead way or you can do it the um, kind of on the Johnny on the spot way. The first way, and this is my favorite, is to when you enter here, when you enter your position, you set multiple positions. So if I've done my risk analysis and um, I'm looking to take a minimum of a one-to-one -one trade here, which I like to at least have the take profit one be a one-to-one -one because then we're at, at a minimum, we're gonna be breaking even. You should never shy away from a one-to-one -one return I know a lot of people tell you, oh, it's gotta be two to one or three to one or you'll never make money. But that is, that's kind of a, a, a semi-falsehood in the industry. One to one can still make you profitable over the long term because if you're managing your stop losses correctly or your, your positions correctly, then it, you should be fine. One to one, it, when it hits take profit one, what I wanna do is I wanna, enter multiple positions. Like I was saying, if I've done my risk analysis, and let's say for this movement, I can afford to risk one mini lot, okay? And I know this is a little bit different for people that are in spread betting or in uh, cent accounts or things like that. But for me, just in a standard US dollar account, a mini account, that's gonna be 10,000 units. Okay, a micro is 1,000, a standard lot is 100,000. These are all very basic concepts for you guys, just a refresher course. But if I can risk one mini lot on my account, what I'm gonna do, depending on how many maybe take profits that I have, is I might enter three, uh, three positions at three micro lots, or I could split it up into two. I'll take two positions at five micro lots, okay? So I'm basically setting multiple positions at my entry. I'm entering multiple times. Then when I hit take profit one, I close out one position. That one that had, uh, sorry. Let's say I did the two mini, uh, the two, uh, I split it up into two open positions. I'll close 50% of my position here. I'll close that, that one position that was trading five micro lots. And then I let the, let the rest go. I bring my stop loss up to break even. Um, 
which I do tell people to do when, when I send out signals in the premium markup channel, I'll tell you take 50% off, 70% off, whatever you're comfortable with, bring your stop loss up to break even, make it a risk free trade and then let the, the, let the rest run. And then you can let the rest go until take profit two, take profit three, whenever you want to close out all of your positions. Okay. That's one way of scaling out of, a trade. The second way is to use your mobile app on MT4. Now, I don't have a screenshot of it because I don't have any open trades right now. I closed everything out. Uh, I had open position in EU, uh, but when we saw that spike about an hour ago, uh, I closed everything out just to be on the safe side because we have high impact news coming in, or it just came in as a matter of fact. I haven't checked it to see what. Uh, how it came out for the dollar. But um, the other way, like I said, is to use your mobile app. And in your mobile app, when you open up uh, or when you go to modify an open position, there will be a slider bar up at the very top of the screen. So try this out the next time you have an open position, open up your mobile phone, get in the MT4 mobile app and go to modify an order, an open order. And at the top, there'll be a slider where you can actually choose to close out. Like if I had this full, like say I put one mini lot on, I can scroll through and close uh, nine, eight, seven, you know, it, it, it'll scroll in micro lots. It'll, it'll let me close as many micro lots as I want. And then I can leave the rest of it open okay and then that's one way that's the if i didn't plan ahead let's say i just dumped instead of doing multiple positions when i entered here said i did one lump sum i put all of my eggs in one basket and then when i get here i want i see this huge spike i want to go ahead and let that ride because it's obvious that price is in a trend i'll open up the mobile app take off five micro lots, which is the same as this, and then let the rest ride. Okay, so that's, that's how you can scale in and out of positions uh, with MT4, MT4 mobile. So you can either plan ahead and scale into positions and then scale out of positions, uh, or you can use the MT4 mobile app. Now, if you're using a regulated broker, I want you to keep one thing in mind. If you set multiple staggered positions like say you have an entry here and then you see a minor pullback like this consolidation here and you decide to go ahead and take a second entry some regulated brokers will have uh, FIFO rules not FIFA <laughs> it's definitely not uh, they're definitely not uh, into soccer or foot, football. Um, make sure that your broker doesn't have FIFO regulations in place. And that means first in, first out. And that means you can't close the second position until you close the first position. It kind of keeps people from hedging as well. So just keep that in mind. I know most brokers, most unregulated or overseas brokers do not have that in place, but just Make sure that you know what's going on with your own broker um, before you start closing out any partial positions. All right, Maurice, I hope that covered that. If you have any further questions on that, uh, go ahead and hit it, hit it in the chat right now. I'll see if I can cover it before we close out. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and let's move on to our full circle scalping. All right, as usual, we're gonna be looking at USD JPY today. Um, as we always do. Now, one thing, as I've mentioned in the past that I really uh, love about the supply and demand support and resistance method is uh, these lines here, these levels of support and resistance have been drawn weeks ago. And you see how price comes back to these levels. This is yesterday, but these are all levels that we set weeks ago in other trade rooms because price is now just coming back to these levels and you can see how price reacts look at that almost exactly just a little bit of a breach this is going to be this would have been in our supply zone so slight 
fake break here. And then we have slight fake break here as well. But for the most part, price is staying in these levels. Now, for those of you that are new to the, new to the room, my levels are color coded with my EMAs. The EMAs that I'm running here, they're based also on the surgical scalping method that's on the YouTube channel. But the slower moving EMA, my slower moving exponential moving average is my 50. That's my baseline. Then my faster is my 14. I do have this uh, 200 in here as well. That's for higher time frame as far as risk on and risk off. It's not completely necessary. As a matter of fact, uh, well, we'll go ahead and leave that on. But only because this morning, I want you to note how twisted up the EMAs are and how flat they are. So right now, we're getting no directional bias, no trend bias from the EMAs. They're completely flat, and they're right along the psychological quarter point. It's a minor quarter. It's a uh, 107. So it's a minor 100 quarter point. For those of you that um, are in the price action advanced course, you guys know the difference between major quarters and minor quarters. So we're right there on a psychological level. And the uh, support and resistance are, like I said, they're color coded with these faster and slower EMAs. The four hour support and resistance is blue to match the slower 50 EMA. The one hour is green. And I, I color code them just so I can know at a glance, am I looking at a, uh, a medium or a very strong strength support or resistance level? Because the one hour may get violated from time to time, but it's very rare that the four hour gets violated. And if it does, it's a big indication that we want to enter the market. Okay. so. Let me open a new chart and I'll show you from beginning to end just the very simple markup process of how we look at uh, support and resistance or how we would mark up. Like if you were just to open a blank chart today, you want to start with the full circle scalping. So let's take a look at how we would do our top down analysis. And then if you guys have any questions, we'll jump into that. All right. Let's see here. Um, let me. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Sorry about that. Let me get one. I'll give you a little extra. Little extra preview on how to set your EMAs. So we've got our, sorry, that one's wrong. So we've got our 14, that's our fast moving. I use that uh, because it, price just seems to respect the 14 a lot more than it does. It's just personal, personal preference. And then we need our 50. So unorganized this morning. God, my apologies, guys. Okay, so we have our 14, our 50, and our 200. And again, we see how twisted up those are on the 15-minute time frame. So the first thing we want to do, we want to set our major levels of support and resistance. We zoom out to the four-hour. And as usual, we want to look at what's relevant to price right now. I could put a four-hour level of support here on this candle body, because this is a, a minor level of reaction here. This is a minor, minor point of failure. Price has failed to go any lower than this, but that's 123, <laughs> that's 123 pips away from price. That's gonna be absolutely irrelevant to what we're doing today. So let me go ahead and, this is our four hour, so it's gonna be dark blue. This is gonna be our four hour support because we rest support and resistance levels on the candle bodies. And then when we go into our 15 minute time frame, then we use the wicks to draw out our zones, our supply and demand zones. So we have support and 
this is going to be, I know it's very close, but this is going to be our, our most relevant resistance level because it's obvious, like it, there's no secret here, UJ is in an uptrend, okay? This is in on, the, on our larger time frame. Our major player, the one that we want to trade with, is in an overall uptrend. So the overall trend is up. That's why we want to have a tight resistance level because if it breaks through that ceiling again, kind of how it did here with this false breakout, then we want to catch that. That's going to be our scalp for the day. Our highest probability setup is going to be a, a long trade, a long scalp. Our lower probability setup will be a short trade, but we might still be able to get like a good a bounce trade or um, a magnet trade, but we have to realize that it's going to be higher time frame, or I mean uh, higher risk because it's going to be a counter trend. So we've got our our strong support and resistance. Now we're going to drop down to the one hour and place our one hour support and resistance. So for that, um, we do have this level down here, but it's so far away. Usually I would put a double level here. Actually, let me go ahead and do that so we can just uh, have both. So we've got a double level of support there, both four hour and one hour, very close together. That's a very strong uh, barrier. If it breaks through that, um, then we could be uh, looking at a very, very high probability short trade, but price is very far away from that right now. So we're gonna use this as kind of a medium level. So we have price resting on this kind of a, I guess you could kind of call it a, a morning star formation, but with this engulfing bearish candle, uh, doesn't really qualify as a classic morning star. But we have arrested on this body. We have wick tap, wick tap, wick tap, wick tap. So we have a lot of confirmations that this is a valid support level. We also have tap here, tap here, and it took a strong candle to break through it. So that's kind of our median line, but price nowhere near that currently. And then our support level. Or sorry, the, our resistance for the one hour is going to be right here. All right, so we're right on those candle bodies resting here. We've got wick tap, wick tap. And to be honest, actually, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. I want to get these wicks in there as well. So we know that because we know that we had that little bit of a false breakout. Uh, earlier in Asian slash London open session earlier today. Um, so we want to stick with that analysis. So we've got our one hour and our four hour in place. And we want to drop down to the 15 minute. And you see this is very simple. This is not a lot of overly complicated analysis, but you do still need to get a little bit of analysis uh, in place before you start taking any type of trade. Uh, but com comparatively, this is extremely quick when it comes to price action analysis. So we have our major levels. Now we're gonna set our supply and demand zones. So because we have this false breakout here, okay, we want our supply zone, which is gonna be above price, to be about the median, about the average of that breakout. All right. This from resistance to highest wick is about nine pips. You know, to be honest, that's actually not horrible. I'm going to move it about here. I like it to be anywhere between five and 10 pips for supply and demand zone. This is just the depth of price. This is just how far price could go before heading back down. Or, you know, that, that's about how far up we'd want our stop loss to be if we get, say, a rejection off of this four hour you know, uh, resistance level. So it just gives us kind of a guesstimation of where price is, could go if we were to take a position. Now, if we have a breakout and a retest of, say we have a breakout of this zone and a retest, we want price hopefully to break through this and close and then we could take an, um, 
our long position. But if it stops short and we still get a confirmation candle, which will be a bullish candle printing after we get a rejection at that, which would then be support, then even if it's still in this blue zone, we're okay to take our long trade. This is just if we see a rejection at this level and we look to sell off of resistance, that price has this much room that it could go up. So we wanna make sure that our stop loss is out of reach, but if it's too far out of reach, it's gonna skew our risk to reward ratio. So it's a constant battle between your entry, your risk, and your reward. And sometimes you will have to pass on trades if they don't qualify, if they don't match up, you know, if they're too out of, out of balance. If you have a nice rejection here, but you have to put your stop loss 20 pips up just to grab five, that's not a good setup. You don't want to take every setup that comes along. Only take the ones that are going to make you profitable. Okay. Now, our uh, demand zone, of course, is going to be down here, and we'll just use the wicks. Very, very simple on this one. Just the complete wick. We've got this double barrier and then this depth of price here. And it's only about five pips. And that's, that's a really, really nice tight range um, if we ever get price to come down here and react in this range. Okay. Um, I hope that makes sense to everyone so far. If you guys have any questions, please make sure and post them in the chat and I can go over anything that uh, I know that was a real quick analysis. If you guys have anything you need me to, you know, double back over, please be sure and let me know. So here is our setup for the morning. And now it's just a matter, hold on. Now it's just a matter of um, waiting for the right setup. So we've done our analysis. No, 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 no. Let me get rid of this. because that's not gonna be our trade plan. So now that we've done our analysis, now we need to set a plan. Right now, we've got price in, in the middle, breaking through not only this 50, but this quarter point, this quarter level, this minor quarter at 107. So we have this forming up. Now, let's keep in mind, our overall trend bias is up. Okay, we're, our, you know, our strongest trade is gonna be a, a long trade. But that doesn't mean that if we don't have short setups uh, that we can't take those as well. The only problem is right now, EMAs are flat. If we had this 50 EMA maybe pointing downward, we could possibly look to take a uh, a 50 EMA breakout trade, okay? For those of you that have gone through the full circle scalping videos, that would be in our EMA scalping bag. I'll oh, look at that rejection right off of that level. That's crazy. So for those of you that have gone through the EMA scalping, uh, the EMA entry here would be as price breaks through the 50, we would enter a short trade, that would be our aggressive entry. And then we wait for the 14 to cross over the 50. That would be our conservative entry short. Okay, our 1450 cross, that's also a signal for entry. So those would be our two possibilities. Right now, like I said, we've got that 50 breakout that's showing up, but with flat EMAs, you always have to be cognizant of what the market is telling you and what price action is telling you. Right now, price action is telling us it's choppy, sideways, and undecided. Possibly price being, um, uh, or a move already being priced in uh, for the USD news that came out. Speaking of which, I was gonna take a look at how that came out on uh, my effects. Let's see, how did that come out? It was really just a speech from, you know, FOMC chair uh, Kaplan, but that has been having kind of a big effect on, um, big effect on a lot of the USD pairs, especially last week, so. 
Doesn't look like it's affected USDJPY too heavily. Let's see how much of a push. Got about 11 pips of a push down. So right now, basically what I'm trying to say is the USDJPY is no clear trade. There's no clear trade. And as I try and mention in each trade room, if there's no clear trade, just sit on your hands. You know, you don't have to trade every day. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I really shy away from students who want to try and do like a, um, uh, like a, 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 I know you guys are familiar with the 5% uh, a day challenge or like there's, there's different ones out there. There's like the 10 pip a day challenge, 1% um, or 5% equity growth a day challenge, you know, and you'll see these uh, spreadsheets that are sent out by um, a lot, mainly by marketers that are like, you know, they show you the, I think the first one I ever saw was from IML and that was my first clue that it was something I definitely did not want to do, <laughs> did not want to do. But um, it, it shows you basically in a progression, if you earn 5% today on say a $100 account, right? You earn $5, just, just five. And then the next day you earn 5% on that. So that would be like five dollars and ten cents or something like that I, I can't do the math in my head but you keep compounding five percent every day that in say two months you know and i haven't looked at this in a long time but in two months you'd be a millionaire or in six months you'd be a, a you know a trillionaire or something like that and the math at first in your head it clicks with that logical part of you and you're like yeah i can do 10 pips a day and then you know in three months, I'm going to retire and quit my job. This is the problem with that, though, is what I've been trying to say is that it, it will kind of force you into that mindset where I have to take a trade, you know, that you have to trade every day. And there's not going to be setups every day. There will be days you go, you go through all your analysis, and you find that there's nothing that's worth your time or at least worth the risk. And so you just, you don't trade that day. But then that puts pressure on you that the next day, okay, well, now I have to get 10%, you know, and you can see how that could spiral out of control, especially if you take a loss. What if I took, what if I traded today and took a loss and okay, now tomorrow I have to get 15%, you know, and so on and so forth. So it's the only reason that I mentioned that is because like, if you don't have a trade, don't trade just Forex is a lot about patience and you're either going to be the person that's collecting the money or giving it away. And if you force yourself into trades that aren't just the most beautiful trades you've ever seen, that day you're going to be giving other people your money. Very, very straightforward, very simple. So if you don't want to be the person that's always giving away the money, right? wait until you find those setups that are so good that if you didn't, didn't take that trade, you wouldn't be able to live with yourself the rest of your life because it was just so obvious. Condition yourself to wait for those types of trades. Um, George Soros, I'm sure you guys have heard of him before. Uh, he has a great quote in The New Market Wizards. I highly suggest you guys read that, that book by Jack Swagger, Interviews with Highly Profitable Hedge Fund Managers. Um, he said that he just waits for money to be laying around the corner and then all he has to do is just go pick it up. That's the mentality he uses when he trades. That it has to be just money that's just sitting there and all he has to do is bend over and pick it up. If it's anything else, more than likely he's gonna be losing money and he avoids those type of trades. So I highly suggest you guys develop that patient mindset to where if it's not just money laying on the ground, just wait, pass by and just practice maybe uh, you know your analysis or your markups and wait for those trades to come by and you'll have a much much higher uh, much more uh, enjoyable trading career trading career yes yes Daphne it is very risky um, compounding absolutely got Daphne in the charts uh, or in the chats for any of you that are watching this after the fact okay so the trade plan for this morning is uh, you know we're getting a we are getting a push down now. So we're seeing the 14 start to curl down, but again, the 50 is still very flat. And I'm not seeing anything just 
coming out at me saying trade me right now. We don't have a magnet trade. We don't have a, a breakout trade. We don't have an EMA cross trade. Uh, we don't have a, a bounce trade or a break through trade, which would be price breaking through a uh, support or resistance level and then uh, continuing on. We do have price. It is violating this quarter point, but a quarter point and an EMA, just not enough confluence for me to take a scalp. Could it possibly keep dropping down to this level and break you off 10, 15 pips? Could. Risk is too high for me personally. So trade as you guys would like, but that is the breakdown for today. I wish we would have had maybe a trade set up, but it does not always happen. All right. That's going to be the markup for this morning. Um, I hope you guys are taking advantage of some of the great, great markups that we had going in uh, the premium markup channel, as well as the free markup channel. I always send up the free market analysis to everybody on Sunday nights, and already we've got two trades that are just on fire, UCAD and uh, USD Swiss franc, both crushing it. Um, we've got a uh, pound dollar trade that's doing very, very well. So very, very, uh, very, very good start to the week. I love starting off the week in profit because then the rest of the week, you're just trading with the market's money. And that's the best feeling you can have because then it's, it, you're the, it's totally risk-free. It's all risk-free until you maybe hit a break-even point. Um, yeah, you're very welcome, Tony. Very welcome. Does anybody have any other questions or would like me to go over anything specific before we uh, wrap this up and call it a day? Speak now or forever hold your pips. Uh, we have a question in the chat. Is the China news relevant to Australian dollar or New Zealand dollar? Yeah, no problem, Tony. Cheers. Um, it's good to have you with us this morning. Um, also, Maurice, yes, very, very welcome. I appreciate you guys coming in. Um, as far as a fundamental or um, a market sentiment standpoint, I mean, yes and no. Does it have a very direct effect? Um, semi because China and the US are the two major economies in the world. So anything that happens between them is going to have ripple effects out for all of the currencies. Now, does it affect Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar? It's slightly in the fact that they do have a strong import export relationship with China. Um, so anything that happens to the Chinese economy is going to affect those economies indirectly. Um, not directly. The only thing that the only economy that's going to affect right now is going to be the U.S. dollar uh, because of you know these negotiations and this possible this looming trade war that might be happening. Um, and then of course that's also going to have have a ripple effect on um, the loonie and the kiwi. So it, it's it's definitely not an easy answer. But it's not one of those where if big news comes out from China that the the loony is going to then tank for some reason. So, um, yeah, yeah, and that's true, true as well, Tony. That uh, like I said, it doesn't have a direct impact. It has kind of a, a corollary impact, a residual impact. But yeah, a, you know, a lot of the that news is priced in anyways. So. Like I said, it, it's not going to cause the loony or the kiwi to spike um, in any great measure. But you definitely want to keep, I mean, like I said, second biggest economy in the world, you definitely want to keep it on your radar for sure. All right, guys, anything else? Let's see here. Carol has a question. Um, how to take or enter a trade the way you marked up UCAD? And are we supposed to be in the trades you put out as planned? or the premium channel, or do we wait on uh, us to call them? That's, it's, um, the markups are going to be on you, but I will usually post in the channel when I jump in those trades and uh, give you guys, I'll try and give you guys an idea of take profit levels and where you might want to put your stop loss. But those markups are mainly for you guys to practice your own entries. And then 
when you see my entries as well, you can kind of see if you're on the same page as me, if you're doing the markups. And the, the whole reason is to just kind of help you guys become better as traders. I do call out the, what we call spot trades, right? Which are, I'm entering at this right now, at this number, this is my exact stop loss, this is my exact take profit levels, and you can enter at that exact same level right, right now, right? Th those are spot trades. Or sometimes I'll give you a pending order for like a sell stop or a buy stop or a buy limit, you know, but I'll give you detailed specifics for the order. The markups are for you to practice your own entries as a trader. I give you the full trade plan and then that allows you to figure out, okay, is it, where am I entering and to kind of practice that, that skill set because I know the signals are nice, but I'd rather teach you guys how to fish than only just give you fish, you know, that old analogy. So the markups, I, I purposely leave those a little bit ambiguous to show you, give you the room to be able to do your own entry analysis, um, have to kind of pull the trigger on your own on those ones, but usually within 15 to 20 minutes, uh, I'll have my entry posted as well. Um, so if you need to get a late entry, you can always do that also, right? So just uh, it's just another tool to help you guys become better traders and to practice your trading. Um, yeah, and Tony's correct. It, the China did used to have a much higher impact on um, the, uh, I guess, what would you call it? The Asian Pacific range, <laughs> the, the loony and the, the Kiwi but not so much these days. Good, yeah, Daphne, definitely keep practicing the supply and demand. Like I said, I really think supply and demand, if done correctly, is probably one of the most powerful and just easiest price action tools to be able to use. So if you've got supply and demand, you can at least know where price has been, where price may go, and where price may react in the future. Those historical levels become psychological levels, and uh, if other traders are trading them, then it's pretty much guaranteed that price will react to them. And then that gives us great places to enter and exit trades. All right, guys, let me go ahead and wrap this up before this, this half hour turned 45 minute video becomes an hour long video. Um, uh, no, 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 no. The, I was pretty sure the, you know, the Aussie is the, the loony, the New Zealand dollar is the Kiwi. Um, the CAD. Now you got to make me look it up real quick. I do appreciate everybody coming in uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. this morning. Thank you for joining us in the uh, in the uh, trade room. Now let me look this up real quick before I let you guys go. I I uh, always want to make sure that I'm giving you guys the correct information. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Yeah, I'll have to look it up later. Uh, we <laughs> we will update that. Um, okay. Well, Russian, I might have to take your. I might have to take your word for it then if, if you're an Aussie. Let's see here. I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'm sure <laughs> this will give us the, the right one. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. We've got. Oh, you're right. Yeah, the US dollar is, uh, yeah, the loony is the CAD and the Aussie. That's so very on the nose, <laughs> the Aussie. <laughs> yeah, okay, you got it. Yep, that was definitely, definitely my mistake. I must have been calling it wrong for a while now. Thank you for that, Rushton. Thank you for that. We will henceforth, we will henceforth refer to that correctly. 
as the Aussie. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for joining us in the chats today. I hope you guys got a lot out of this trade room. Uh, if you guys have any questions about anything, make sure and hit me up. I'm always on Messenger, Telegram. Please join our Facebook group and our free Telegram groups if you aren't already a part of that. And again, if you're catching this after the fact on YouTube, please give us a like or a subscribe. I'm trying to put out new videos almost every day and uh, click the bell icon if you want to get alerted to those new videos. All right. Thanks guys. You guys are very welcome. Everybody in the chats. Thank you for joining me this morning. I have been Ryan with ZenFX. Thanks for joining us. I will see you guys in the next video. I'll see you guys in the charts. And as always, let's get those pips. All right, guys, have a great day.